Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time again for another end-to-end -end sprawling multi-themed mega park. There are no shortages of roller coasters in this here theme park, and we are going to be going back to back to back, coaster after coaster, all episode long. So buckle up, stay tuned, and let's check it out. Hey yo, my planet coaster friends, Johnny Five Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Park Spotlight. Today we're gonna to be looking at Adventureland theme park created by Real Chill Dill, an advanced builder in this community. And here they say, Adventureland theme park is my first ever fully finished theme park in Planet Coaster. I've followed the game and Channel 5 gaming for a while now and have been amazed at what people have created. But only recently did I start creating on my own and interacting with the Channel 5 gaming community. Oh, after over two years of work, I'm happy to say this park is finally done. There are five themed areas of the park with 11 main attractions, including nine standard roller coasters, a dueling coaster, and a dark ride log flume, along with a bunch of family-friendly flat rides. It's safe to say there is a lot to do in this park. There's also a short show in the Pirates Bay you can watch on schedule. Synchroser is on top of the rightmost speaker if you want to skip ahead. Thank you for all that you do for this community and I personally really appreciate the videos and spotlights you've done so consistently. Well, I don't know if it's consistent but after seven years of doing this you do tend to lose consistency but we're trying our best. I appreciate the kind words. Mr. Real Chill Dill. Also an unfamiliar name to me but they are an advanced builder so that means they are on the discord and the moderators have given them a rank based off of their workshop so welcome to uh your first ever spotlight and your first appearance uh for me that's pretty cool and uh the park is looking absolutely stunning as you guys can see as they said in their introduction there is no shortage of content here we're gonna be doing all sorts of fun stuff so why don't we delay no further and jump right on into it okay ladies and gentlemen welcome welcome to adventureland this is the uh only little bit of fantasy in the whole park basically the park entrance and then we'll get in here we got a little bit of a fantasy main street i might actually have to get the volume down here too i had the volume up so loud from yesterday's video because there was like no ambience now i have too much <laughs> i actually appreciate it when you guys do the ambience i can't hear myself think and generally that's a good idea <laughs> good thing <laughs> if i don't need to uh talk and the park speaks for itself and the ambience does the job for me um it makes the experience a little bit more immersive what is going on here that's so cool that's a first ever you guys that's a park beyond ferris wheel right there carousel a double stack carousel I've never seen anybody do that, ever, in the seven years of doing this. That looks freaking fantastic. Composition looks great. Castle walls in the back, hedge trims up front. Beautifully decorated garden cues. Great pathwork here. It's looking fan... Fa it's looking fantasy. It's looking fantastic. Uh, usually these uh, castle walls with the little red top castle pieces, they can look uh, very, very plain, kind of bland, especially if you do long stretches of them. But I think with all the uh, little flags that you've done, the little bits and the garden work and the hedges, uh, windows, you've really dressed up this castle area to be even more castle-y. And I think it pops quite nicely. For an advanced builder, somebody that's done their first ever park, uh, I think this is all looking really, really solid. Very, very good. The jungle. We're going this way. We're going counterclockwise around the park. Uh, why not? Kicking things off with the jungle. The Jaguar. So we have like an Intamin Blitz uh, double launch style coaster from what I remember from the B-roll. Very cool. I think this is a great way to kick things off. I'm not really doing anything in any rhyme or reason here today. Uh, I just was closer to this area of the park, so I walked on in it. But I think kicking things off with an Intamin Blitz double launch is definitely a fast and furious uh, pace to kick things off with a bang. So... Definitely excited about this one here. 
let's see what we have to offer here. Oh, uh, look at that. You got the numbering stalls here. I like to see it. Little touches of realism here and there. Uh, launch vector, green across the board, 154 seconds in duration, 1.6 kilometers in length, 65 miles per hour is the fastest launch on this guy, and the biggest drop at 35 meters with three inversions and a little bit of airtime. And we are not getting on that one. We are getting on this one. We're going to be kicking things off with track view. I will check for nighttime as well. Let's go. is the real dillio <laughs> wow i am thoroughly impressed by that not that i shouldn't be or anything i'm just i didn't know what to expect going into this i saw advanced builder the park looks great i got the b-roll all of that stuff my expectations were you know right around the uh, advanced area kind of middling and this goes above and beyond my expectations great coaster design and layout let's check it out again at night let's go The real chill dill making their planet coaster debut. Uh, bang. Wow, freaking way. Oh my good gracious. Coaster layout was fun. Track layout, uh, it, coaster was really smooth. There weren't really any kinks or anything. Like for an advanced builder, I would have expected um, a lot more of a rougher layout. Very smooth, very nice. Everything about this park looked appealing to me on the outside, and that's why I picked it out here today. But sometimes you never know what you're going to get. Sometimes, uh, they're not as good as I expected them to be, and sometimes they're better than I expected them to be. Uh, seeing that this was uh, a newer builder, a familiar name, an advanced builder, 
Uh, I did expect it to be a good quality park to share with you guys here today, but it's even better than I thought so far. Really good experience, and I gotta say, you, you, like, uh, you're, you're making your debut, and you're doing it all right. We did do nighttime on that, there was nighttime lighting. We did day view, track view, it was all smooth, good coaster elements, all that stuff. Great theming, great environments, great surrounding, and most importantly, great ambience. Well, I think this is a, a, a great comparison. If you guys saw yesterday's video, Saturday's video here, uh, which would have been Mythica, Land of Myths and Legends, um, that was from Dorn Ice who's now a master builder. And it was one of the most detailed and intricate theme parks I have ever seen. They spent three years creating it. So here we go, we're at the uh, River Adventure. I mean, we might as well uh, give this a putz around and uh, I can finish up my thoughts here. See if we can find the right boat. There's a lot of them. Is this the one? I think so. Yeah, so I think it's a great comparison to yesterday's video because in Mythica, it was just immensely detailed. I have never seen that amount of detail in a theme park. And if you compare it one-to-one -to, -one to this, yeah, there's uh, like this shoreline would have had a, a thousand more things on it if it was Doran's park, right? But this park has a little bit more breathing room and it really came out with a punch. We're walking through the park and there's ambience everywhere. There's still a great amount of theming and it gives you great vibes. The The audio was great, the nighttime lighting's there, everything is there, and the coaster experience was exhilarating. It has everything that you need, but also those feel-good vibes. So, I guess what I'm trying to take from it is the ambience of yesterday's park was lacking for me, and it really, uh, here, it's there, and it's really contributing to the overall experience, even though the detail's not nearly on the masterful level as yesterday's park, the experience can be just as good, with just the right amount of tweaking and creating of that ambience. So, gotta give it to Real Chill Dill, has included and thought about everything. We have all the theming there, we have the multiple themed areas, we have really good nighttime lighting and music everywhere, and the coasters, most importantly, are fun to ride. So, doing it right for your debut, and uh, you should be really proud of yourself. So far, this is looking really good, and it's feeling like a very good experience, uh, and I'm going to thoroughly enjoy this start to finish from the looks of things. So what do we got going on over here? We got a gigantic Woody. Look at the banking on that. Some pretty much 90 degree sideways banking going up and over that jungle there. Incredible. Uh, it also looks like it has some interior. You're coming up through a mountain cave. That's pretty sweet as well. We have the Adventure Center, the Wild West. That's an interesting looking building. It looks like it's made out of Lego. <laughs> A double drop tower back there, and back into the jungle we are. Cool. Nice little waterfall back there as well, and there goes the woody right on the top of the mountain. Definitely going to have to head over there now-ish if we can. I saw something going on over here in the B-roll, and I didn't really get any shots of it. So I'm really curious to see what's in this gigantic Temple of Fortune. What's going on with this? I never went in here for the uh, introduction. I should probably switch it tonight. Enter if you dare. Now, they did say there was a Dark Ride River Rapid, so if I was going to make a guess, I would imagine this would be it, right? I think I heard some splashing as well in the background there. But if we're going in through a dark queue in an adventure land area, all things point to Log Flume to me. But I like the uh, shaking it up not making just a standard log flume in an adventure jungle like we've seen time and time again. Turning it into an adventure temple run dark ride is definitely a nice spin. So being a little bit innovative and creative there is our advanced builder here today. Love it. Okay, uh, no guests. Oh yeah, that's uh, an interesting point as well. Again, love the music. This is great, setting the tone. Um, I let 5,000 guests in and there were like none in the park. So they might not have uh, gotten to all of the attractions just yet. I did try to fast forward it a little bit. Um, 
We'll see how many guests are in the park after this ride. I will shut up now. Oh, there's a bunny. Very well done, great use of animatronics, great ambience, great scenes, and really good pacing. When, there, when it was going slow, there was a lot to look at. When, it was, uh, when there wasn't much to look at, it was going fast. I really love that. I think I forgot to switch it back to daytime, so when we did go outside, it was still night. So I guess one thing you could maybe consider to do in the future is uh, test play around with those day-night sequencers. Uh, we're going down an entrance. Yeah, play around with some of those day-night sequencers and see how that fares for you. Keeping it dark while we're underground, switching it to day. But the nice thing about that is I could have, uh, we went deep enough where it would have probably still been dark in underground had I went through the whole experience at daytime. So we really could have rode that two different ways, which is also good. But wow, look at this temple. Definitely has a massive scale to it. And I like how the River Rapids goes over top and around it. That's a really fun integration. Pretty awesome area. I really like what you did here. The sunlight's just hitting it all really nicely. Very vibrant. Amazing. Absolutely. So kick things off with a bang going on that uh, double launch coaster. And even the River Rapids was exhilarating. Great audio the whole way through as well. It felt like an adventure. It felt like an Indiana Jones experience or something like that. Jungle Cat Speedway. I did catch a glimpse of this. And I was like, wow, there were no guests at the time in the queue, so I didn't get any B-roll of it. But we have a Donkey Kong <laughs> Raceway. The Jungle Raceway. I love it. I freaking love it. I always say, guys, every time I see go-karts, I get excited. And that every good theme park should try to include a um, go-kart. Because I, I feel, I really do feel that the, um, the go-karts work in pretty much any setting, right? You can do jungle go-karts. You could do city go-karts. You could do fantasy go-karts you can do whatever the heck you want and make it work if you get the theming right yes uh the vehicles are very modern but you can still just have fun with it it's a video game after all and i just love seeing what people do with these circuits let's see how good this one is so far the track looks pretty good 
Bit of a figure eight winding over and underneath itself. Very nice. I feel like uh, we need to go and make some of the Mario Go-Kart circuits. You know what? The uh, very first contest we ever did for the channel, we've done so far like 30 or 40 now, but the very first one ever was in fact Go-Karts. And um, we did not showcase them all. I just showcased the winners. But... I've been thinking about doing another contest for everybody. Maybe a fun little thing to do would be a, a go-kart contest. The thing is, though, um, I don't want to just ride go-karts all day. It might ruin the allure of them, right? After after we get 50 to 100 submissions of go-karts, I might just never want to ride go-karts again. So I think the way to do it, I was talking about a, a bit of a mini park contest, an uh, island adventure contest where we give you different sized maps and you have to build theme parks on them. Choose which one you want to do. Maybe uh, one of the requirements could be to include some go-karts, right? That way we get to explore these awesome parks and see how the go-karts are integrated because I truly feel like go-karts on their own aren't that good. It's when they're surrounded by all this awesomeness. I feel like that one was okay. It was a pretty average go-kart experience overall. We definitely could have dressed it up a little bit more and done a little bit more with that uh, exploration, but not too bad at all. Definitely a, a solid go-kart overall. Uh, I'm loving these fonts, by the way. The Train of Frontier. Wow. Um, this is probably gonna be a mine train coaster. I would imagine. I did see one at some point. Appears to be that way, yes. All right, so we're kind of at the back end of the park at this point, and I guess the uh, guests are finally making their way over here. How many are in the park now? All 5,000 have made it into the park, so they just need to kind of disperse around equally. What do we got going on here? Let's see, results, train of the frontier, almost a kilometer length, 44 miles per hour, 18 meters is the biggest drop, seven airtime counts, three seconds of airtime total, a family friendly train ride, but the stats are looking pretty good, <laughs> look at these twins out front, all right, let's check it out, uh oh, we lost our audio, no, I'm doing it, no music, line up bluegrass, go back on it, here we go, <laughs> This one, uh, let's talk about this one for a second. <clears throat> I definitely feel the back half of that coaster was much better than the front half. There's something about these really tall, tall supports on a mine train coaster that I just don't find appealing at all. It looks a little bit amateur seeing it that way. I feel like you need to bring it down lower after the lift and cover it with more terrain. This really should just be a, a mine uh, or a mountain with a mine, right? We're going up a mine shaft or something like that, going 
through the mines and then some TNT blows up and maybe a little too cliche, sure, but at least something uh, environmentally speaking. I like this addition to the train being added in. I definitely like that aspect of it, but it's also just kind of floating here with no integration. So yeah, something about this feels a little unfinished to me. I would have liked to see a little bit more of that red rock terrain mixed in, mine shafts and stuff. But then we get to the back half and we really do get that the coaster is hugging that terrain. You do have a custom bridge here. It's going underneath itself. It's really hugging that terrain, but you still put the boards in and uh, the terrain works looking really nice. It's it's smooth overall. That part to me looks a lot better. And I guess that's maybe the aesthetic you were going for. You want both sides to feel a little bit different. This more dried, arid going towards the jungle and this more the red rock. I just feel like this could have been dressed up a little bit better for sure. It's looking a little bit sloppy here. Um, and if you could have mimicked some of what you did here in terms of the smoothness of the terrain, the little bridges and stuff like that, and somehow integrated that so the, the ground wasn't so flat, um, I think it could have gone a long ways. You know, dip that into the canyons going right in between the red rocks as they're parting and going dropping in between them giving us a little bit of that claustrophobia and then back up over top the cliffs again um and then across some bridges and stuff so not bad overall though i definitely like the second half of it and uh lift hills speed up your lift hills for sure okay what are we doing now lots of hot dogs and burgers gulpy like the cute builds all looking good Texas tornado. Awesome. This is looking sweet. Ooh, the tumbleweed. <laughs> Flat rides could use more dressing. They're a little plain, but at least you tried to put something in there. I wonder what you could have done to make it more like a tumbleweed. Throw a bunch of that thatched stuff in. Make it look like it's tumbling and uh, covered in weeds. <laughs> have fun with your flat rides. Don't forget about them. If there's anything that you're going to, you know, save time on, probably best to cut cut corners on your flat rides so far though you got be big beautiful sides for your coasters broncos wild ride uh elaborate cues detailed cues doing the um keeping us under the shade building little um queue buildings for everything and really nice boarding stations as well so not slouching it by any means on your coasters fully integrated and that's that's what's key so really good job liking what i'm seeing okay what do we got going on here it's a hyper coaster anubis almost a kilometer in length 56 miles per hour 29 meters is the biggest drop and quite a bit of airtime on this with five airtime counts at five seconds so about a second each airtime that's great all right uh let's check this out in track view I was commenting on how good the ambience and audio has been, and then we get to the Western area and it's pretty much non-existent. Super disappointing. Yeah. One thing I recommend you guys do when you finish your parks, do your own park spotlight. Like walk around, maybe even make a video for your own YouTube channels and try to capture or see what's missing, you know? Try to go through the whole experience yourself so you can catch what's missing in what areas. Okay, let's do this. All right, beautifully done on that one. Great coaster layout, absolutely enjoyed that. I don't think it's gonna have much to offer in terms of nighttime for some reason, but we could double check here. Oh, I might be wrong. I still think I could pass on this one for a night though. Looking pretty good though. Like the spotlights coming up from underneath. Okay, is this a boomerang coaster or? Nope, it's a corkscrew, we got a lift. The rattlesnake. Hypercoaster into a corkscrew. Actually quite like the way you lit that up. 
But what I like even more is the color palette for daytime. All of these, uh, all the hard wood, different colors of wood used in, but then offset by this bright yellow. I love it. For whatever reason, it gives me, uh, it's reminded me of painting. I got into Warhammer 40k as of recently, and I, uh, I was messing around with, like, how to highlight, how to make, like, edges pop, and I, I, I recently discovered the best way to do things isn't to choose a lighter color, so in, instead of, uh, my Macrog Blue Marines that are Ultramarines, instead of highlighting them with, like, a, a Calgar Blue, which is just a lighter blue, um, I go for something completely wild, like a cyan, like a very vibrant blue that is completely different contrast and different saturation altogether, and boy does it make it look cool. And when I see that coaster on top of orange, that's how I would do something like that. Like, uh, I did like a brownish cape and highlighted it with yellow, and it makes those edges just pop. So when I see this, I'm like, oh, yeah, well, I'm gonna go use some yellow on brown next time I work on <laughs> some leather or something like that. <laughs> That's what... I got painting on the brain. I can't stop thinking about it. Uh, I, it's something I might actually bring to the channel now that I'm getting into it. and I'm getting, It's been about a month now that I've been into painting and doing all that as a hobby. Maybe start making some videos on it. I just don't know how to do that because I need proper lighting, a turntable, uh, a proper camera. I guess my iPhone should work, but we'll see. Okay, the, so this coaster actually uses Planet Bluegrass. Probably why the other one didn't, but there's plenty of Western songs in this game. About a kilometer in length on this here corkscrew coaster. Traditional American looping arrow. It's a looping Deegan, sorry. And uh, eight inversions all together. I think we could do nighttime. Let's do both. I like the nighttime lighting on this. So yeah, let's check it out. Absolutely wonderful. Love it. Simple, but clean. Great uh, coaster elements through and through. Really well done. All right, we are going down another queue. Let's go down the exit. This way. See you later. All right. <coughs> wow. Let's go. Again, I love that. Pitch black, bright yellow, beautiful font. Looking good. The actual uh, build itself, too. Incredible. Rattling Jack Saloon. Switching up the color, not so, uh, so it's not so neutral and plain all across. And here we go. Pirate's Bay. Let's freaking go. I love me some pirate, you guys. Rocktopus. 
Captain Lark's Last Stand. Oh, this is the show that they talked about. And the speakers. Right. I remembered. Let's check it out. Where do I sit? Dinner, 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 dinner. The speaker should be over here, by the way, so we can hear it. The ships have a little battle. This one's sinking. It's really hard to do these shows. Um, because you're so limited, like, the animatronics are static, even though they move once animated. But you can't make things disappear and reappear unless you're using some sort of smoke and mirrors and curtains. Right? Um, I've barely, rarely seen it done well. But what you can do is you can layer things with uh, parallaxing and stuff like that if you do everything within a box and drop certain curtains, open up new curtains to reveal new scenes that are behind it and that sort of thing. But when everything's out in the open like this, it's just going to be cannons firing, water splurging. Uh, pretty hard to do anything uh, super elaborate unless you're using the Theme Maker Toolkit downloaded assets or creating a track ride experience. But I commend... Uh, you for having that there. Having a, a show in the middle of the theme park is quite normal, and most people will just put them there with just nothing there, right? Like, you'll go there and it'll just be like, the show is currently closed. So at least you put the effort in to have a little bit of something. If you dare. <laughs> I do. Yeah, it's, it's quite cool to uh, at least put some effort into that, so definitely hats off to you for Having that included. I like how this building's like looks like a ship. Boarding station ship. Inverted coaster. Hangman. It's a fitting name for an invert. What are we dealing with here? We got uh, about a kilometer in length, just shy of. Uh, six inversions. 60, mi 60 kilometers per hour. Wait, have I been saying miles or kilometers? It's miles. That's weird. Because it's doing meters and miles. Huh. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> Anyways. Let's go! Again, very smooth coaster layouts. I'm loving it. Let's see, uh, do you have any nighttime lighting on this guy? Where am I looking? Not a whole lot, but yeah, it's not too much. I would like to see a little bit more of that Caribbean fun pirate stuff on this coaster. The actual environment itself looks pretty good. Pirates not welcome, like you've done the waterfalls, the, the rock work, and the tropical stuff, but would have been fun to have this go in and around some ships and some Caribbean castles and just build it up a little bit more. The actual, like, outside of what you've done is really good, and I want to see more of that on the coaster experience. But, I mean, it's a good coaster layout, and uh, that's all we really expect from these. Like, uh, that's what a lot of the Six Flag theme parks are, right? But in terms of video game gamifying things, taking it to the next level, doing stuff that you can only do in a game, or taking it, you know, <laughs> what have you done here? I have never seen anyone do that. That is incredible. Oh my... No wonder none of the guests are on this. You are gonna get soaked on that. That is awesome. Well done. The big sploosh. I'm glad that was in full swing when we walked by it, but you put a, um... So everyone's wondering what's going on here. I can't even do it. There's a River Rapids track in there. So they built a River Rapids 
ride and then deleted the station so that just the track is there. Then they animated it so on cycle, the big sploosh comes up. I don't know why that has never been done until just now. That is remarkable. Well done. I was saying earlier that your flat rides were a little bit on the plane side. If there's anything to cheap out on, it would be the flat rides. But there is some integration. Like you did the walls here. You did some uh, work for the, the the pathing. There's you know terrain surrounding them. There's just no added assets to the actual you know support structure other than the sign out front. But what you did there adding the river rapids and the big splash, uh, that to me is over the top. I love that. Maybe a little bit more of this piratification stuff around the ship would have been cool. Embedding it into a harbor itself, having those ships behind it, uh, that could have been a nice touch. But what you did with it, I love it. Absolutely. Twisting tides, what's this? You made your own ship? That's cool. Also, we can go inside of it? Oh, it's a spinning coaster. Oh, that's wicked. Okay, we got an extra ride here. Green across the board, almost a kilometer in length. We're gonna go uh, seat view. All right, the music's back. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. I like it when it's there. Let's freaking go. seemed a little bit more thematic. Hard to tell with all the spinning that was going on. Do we have nighttime lighting? Uh, I like this custom skull that you did as well. Look at the eyes on that. That's pretty cool. Not a whole lot of nighttime lighting on this, but I do want to give it another ride in track view because I feel like we missed a lot of the details on that one. So let's check this out again without the spin. nice very smooth let's freaking go uh saw a big sign over here king kraken i'm loving what you did with these signs this is just made out of boards but you've made them this vibrant green i love it looks really nice what is the king kraken big hyper coaster giga coaster maybe pretty cool Beware of the Kraken. All right. I have a feeling we're going to see some animatronics on this one. A big fort wall. Cool. Uh, the way you did these cutouts is pretty neat. The rock shapes. What is that? I mean, no. Huh. You did that with the skull eyes as well. I thought that was pretty impressive. Okay. Well, look at that. Probably the biggest coaster in the park. Our Giga Coaster. Let's see. It's the Giga Rage. Green across the board. 1.3 kilometers in length. 72 miles per hour is the top speeds. Seven airtime counts and seven seconds of airtime. No shortage of airtime here. And it is the King Kraken. Definitely going to want to ride this one in track view. And off we go.
Good freaking googly moogly. Oh, I love what you did with the uh, ridges of this ship hull. Going through that was really freaking cool. All the sand that you put in there as well, just as got all dusted up. Great uh, placement of the block section there as well. Really nice stuff. We got to the top of that lift and I realized there's a wooden coaster way back there that we never ended up going on that I was said that I was looking forward to. So I don't know how I missed that, but we're gonna have to do a double back at some point. Bobbing barrels, bobbing barrels. The treasure trove, that looks nice. I like this composition you got going on here. Very, very nice. Okay, well now we are arriving in a, the future. <laughs> Welcome to the future. Uh, we have this, what are these things called? Impulsions. I'm gonna pass on that one. Just goes back and forth. Good old skateboard ramp, right? Half pipe. For a sci-fi area, it's feeling very flat, don't you think? Usually these areas are, uh, full of stuff. The pieces are so big, it's so easy to fill it up. But this looks cool, we got a dueling racing style coaster. That's not the queue. Where's my queue? This must be it, DNA, raceway. We're going blue. We'll probably ride them both. How about we do blue at night and red at day? Uh, there has to be nighttime lighting on this. Although it's very dark in here. A few extra... See, these lights don't emanate light. They're really bad. So you need to add some uh, area lights or flood lights into these rooms when uh, doing sci-fi. But I was gonna say, it's a sci-fi coaster, so I'd expect there to be lots of nighttime lighting on these. So fingers crossed for that. Uh, Typhoon Infinite, it's taking off. So quick look at the stats there if you wanna see them. And uh, let's get on this one here. Three trains running on this from the looks of things. Uh, we'll do seat view uh, at the back and then track view for daytime on the red coaster. Okay, very slow crawling lift here, but we'll make it. Here we go. All right, really well done. Very competitive with lots of interactions between the two coasters. I like how there's a pit stop and then a second launch on the coaster. You go from lift to launch. Almost made me feel like that uh, second room that you made where they uh, launched should have been a pit stop <laughs> for racing coasters. That's a fun concept to play around with. Maybe it was, it was just kind of dark to see. Uh, we can take another look at it at daytime here, but we'll do the red one this time and uh, jump over to the uh, track. Let's uh, Let's do this.
And there it is. Yeah, very interesting take on sci-fi from what we're seeing here. A little bit more desolate and spread out. Very low instead of uh, vertical like you're normally used to seeing with these sci-fi parks. But I also like it. Every, I just, it made me think like everything in this park is very vanilla, right? It's out of the box planet coaster. There's nothing wrong with that. I like it for sure. I feel like we're so used to seeing people innovating, doing something different, uh, you know, like elevating themes, creating uh, non, uh, what do you call it? Non-native themes to planet coaster like steampunk and Viking. Wendy's time travel trouble. <laughs> but I guess to my point there is this is out of the box vanilla, but they've put their own spin on it. You can definitely see that with the, the color, the colors you the fonts um, they've done something fun with it it's out of the box vanilla but done in a very fun way and I think it's refreshing right it's just a step back from like let's always push things to the extreme let's let's do something crazy here no this is just more traditional more uh, back to the basics but done well and I like that. Um, this, I don't know if we should be riding this at day or night. I guess we could do both. It's a junior coaster. I love a good junior. So let's see what this has to offer. <laughs> that was adorable. While short and sweet, I actually really like those little scenes that we went through. That was quite cute. I would have liked to see a little bit more of it. You did a good job at like crafting out those scenes and this idea of Wendy's time travel trouble. It's so, you put such a big emphasis on the name and like the branding. I was expecting something so big and it was quite the opposite that I find it adorably like an oxymoron. It's kind of amazing, but I liked it and I wanted more of it. You better bring back Wendy and her time travel trouble, part two, the, for your next park. <laughs> oh, that's great. I thought it was actually gonna go into the, um, I thought it was gonna go into the fantasy area and that would have been the time travel. We go through the interior part of the futuristic stuff, but then it becomes the, the caterpillar or Wendigo crawling through the castles and the medieval stuff. So maybe for part two, that's what you can do. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see that return in a sequel for sure. It was adorable. Okay, so we got some uh, tech towers. The Adventure Center. Okay, this is the Lego hut. And then the jungle. How do we get to our... Uh, I'm assuming the wooden coaster is somewhere in the jungle and I missed it. It has to be, right? Let's follow the wooden tracks. The journey to Relic Island. This has got to be it, right? Uh, I don't know how many rides are left in the park, but we did a full circle through all of the themes areas unless I missed one I'll check the ride list this could potentially be our final attraction of the day but ending it off on a high note we would be with a woody no better way to finish it than with a solid wooden coaster and this one looks solid except for this kid's not enjoying it oh this lady <laughs> she had her head down all right journey to relic island one kilometer in length 60 miles per hour 36 meters is the biggest drop a little bit of air time on this one as well we gotta go back of the train and uh we'll do it at daytime let's go no your head is in my way that's better
Good freaking googly moogly. Hey, there's a wild mouse. <laughs> definitely one more coaster to go on then. I was going to say that is definitely saving the best for last. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, not only was it a great woody layout, but most of it was fully themed all the way through, which is definitely hard to do unless you're doing these adventure style wooden coasters, which I love. You do all of these dig sites here with these ancient temples and finding these relics and jewels. It has this Indiana Jones adventure feel to it. Wonderful and great land landscaping too all the way through and through volcanoes and all sorts of stuff uh that was phenomenal absolutely phenomenal definitely my favorite coaster in the park uh both for its elements it's hard banking it's layout the smoothness but then also the theming thematically visual visually impressive through and through and hey we found a little wild mouse here off to the side uh, an adorable tiny little step crawl to the top here <laughs> and uh we get to a spinning wild mouse let's check it out Fun little bonus wild most coasters there. Let me hit up the uh, ride list and then we'll give our final thoughts and discussion about the park here. Okay, other than not going on the cannonball, specifically because I didn't want to, uh, we have officially hit everything. Let's take a look at this end-to-end -end mega park from a bird's eye view. Definitely filling out that ma map space. Yeah, there's a little bit back here that you can do, but for a first time ever creation, uh, this person's very first ever theme park, it is end-to-end -end and sprawling. Tons of content here, tons of great experiences. Through and through had a, a great time. The theming was over the top. Everything had a good flow to it as well. <coughs> Not oftentimes do I get to make that comment, but everything kind of just circled around and we get to pass through one themed area to another. But then you also have these conjuncture points where if I want to go to this area next, I can. But if I want to head back through this area to the main uh, park entrance again, I can. You have these ways to give me two directions to uh, switch where I'm headed or just keep going around. I think the actual layout of it all was very well constructed. Coasters were very smooth, great coaster elements. There wasn't really any jank other than my uh, me not being in love with this wooden mine train coaster. I thought all of them were very, very, very good. Um, everything was done to an, an exceptional quality for this advanced builder. I'd definitely say expert quality. If there's anything I would uh, say that they can improve on and change for next time, uh, I, I don't think you're bad at theming at all. In fact, I think you're very, very good at it. If you look at some of these areas, these compositions, the way you've done the signs, everything is very masterful. I love it. Uh, there are just some areas where it's just like, just do more of that, right? Like, uh, what happened here? There's like one cactus over here, right? <laughs> you have areas that are really over the top thematically and then just kind of forgotten about even like could use a little bit more detail here a couple props a little bit more foliage more cowboy stuff barrels crates and stuff all of your base coats right are really good everything that you've done with the broad strokes is nice it just needs that like last 10 percent like just a little sprinkle here a little sprinkle there even this environment here it's looking like sparsely it's it's very strange it's like very randomly placed about where i think it could just be a little bit more surgical get a little bit more crafty with these back end areas i mean you could have just done nothing here and it would have been fine it'd be like a six flags park <laughs> you know just put a fence around the coaster have a couple things here and be done with it so at least the effort is definitely there but in terms of like where do i improve how can it be better for next time how can i p pack a little bit more of a punch it's just really getting into that nitty gritty like as we're coming down here we could have definitely instead of just doing the park fence here i would have done a pirate fence and had more ships more caribbean towers more pirate stuff try to enclose us in envelop us into that immersion so that we're never leaving pirate even when we're here try to suspend our our belief as long as possible uh while we're in the area so for me it's just like a little sprinkle a little dab more of that what you're doing well more of it and it definitely in the park entrance when we first stepped into the park i felt that right there's not a single meter of area here left untouched it is just popping everywhere. Even the walls back here, where it would normally look plain, you made sure to dress it up so it's not. So you really had the energy and the enthusiasm and uh, the patience to make sure that this park entrance area was just bedazzling 
do more of this in some of your other areas like the pirate and the some parts of the western right um but that could also come fly from come from flavor fatigue you're doing so much and you're just kind of like i want to move on to the next thing i want to build another coaster i want to do another area but for me that the most outstanding area would be your adventure the adventure was pretty much decorated through and through everywhere same with your fantasy and as we got further and further into the park uh more and more of the areas started to feel a little bit more sparse and forgot about but the buildings themselves like i said the broad strokes the main components the queues the boarding stations the actual coaster signs all the important stuff was definitely given a lot of attention to detail and love and i think that's what's most important because it's elevated beyond that of like a, a standard park or a six flags park or something like that the theming is definitely over the top in comparison to a lot of that stuff but when we're trying to elevate you to a master builder what are the legends doing what are the people making these extraordinary theme parks like nothing ever before seen before they're doing that what i just said there they're filling in every nook and cranny and i think you're nailing that in the adventure and fantasy areas 100 so you know maybe what it would have probably taken you an extra week or two to just do another pass of detail over everything. Uh, but I think it would have definitely paid off in the end where I would have been like, wow, this is definitely like a five out of five experience for me because I liked all the rides. I liked all the theme areas. I liked exploring the park. But for me, there's just a little bit of something missing along the way that uh, for me, it just falls a little bit short. But still, like for your very first ever park, an advanced builder in the community, new to the whole scene, doing like a four to five level quality park like this is just absolutely outstanding so i still believe you've done above and beyond what most people's expectations from an advanced builder build would be so you're building above your level and those little pointers that i suggested there will take you to the take you over the top and i truly believe if you uh just keep doing what you're doing well here keep up with the awesome coaster designs coaster elements uh all that stuff then do that again for your next park you'll be building your next park should become out pretty masterful and with that i would say the next thing you should probably look to do is elevate your theming in terms of uh instead of using planet coaster out of the box and what i mean by that is the sci-fi stuff you know it's just like all standard sci-fi blah 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 try to do something that's your own like create like a sci-fi theme out of your own pieces or just disregard it entirely maybe try steampunk right because steampunk is not something that exists in the pieces you have to build it yourself or try vikings you know those are like pretty cliche examples those are the common ones that we see people doing quite a lot but it is a challenging thing because you can't just go oh like let me download uh, or use some of the pre-made assets or some of the pre-made pieces you have to get really crafty with your your uh stuff so uh, or so that's that's one direction you could go with it right uh, coming up with new themes that are not native to Planet Coaster, or step two would be to elevate your current themes. So I think Pirate was pretty average here. And what I like to see with these Pirate areas is a lot more shantiness. So this is like open tropical flat ground stuff with a few little lakes in between. You need to like really embed it into the side of the mountain. Look at what Rai Rai's done in the past or Hardy's Hope, uh, which is a park that I featured on the channel. If you just go to the search engine, type in Hardy's Hope, you get these massive back, like you basically need to build a giant mountain here and then just cover it in shanty buildings and then have the coasters go up and around and over all that and then drop down between waterfalls and go between all these like volcanic tower or uh, caves and stuff and just like really like massive go really big and grandeur with your your themes right just take them over the top then you could just continue to do things vanilla but vanilla extreme and i think you actually did that very very well with your adventure we have these big bold mountains these crazy all this uh terrain is looking amazing the foliage is looking great we have big waterfalls the uh the dig sites were a great addition to that that changed the contrast it was like whoa what's this uh so i, I really love the integration there you went big and bold and um <clears throat> That's where I think you already have a grasp on that. Even this giant temple here, you're like big and bold. So I think you did adventure big and bold. How can you do it bigger next time? Or how can you take what you did well here and apply it to some of your Western themes? That would be my kind of recommendations and I guess uh, feedback for you in the next time. But that is only for the next time. I think what you did here was fantastic. I mean, absolutely blew me away. I had a ton of fun. We spent a whole hour long in this park, all rode a lot of amazing coasters and they were all exceptionally well done so i've just uh given you this personal feedback because you're uh because of the way you made your introduction um and all that being a newer 
member to the community and obviously somebody that is inter interested in improving. So all I could say is I look forward to seeing real chill Dill appear in the inbox again. Even though you spent two years on this park, maybe what I could recommend you do instead of doing an end-to-end -end mega park like this, take some of the feedback, some of the stuff that I recommended here today and do a park like this big right and do maybe one or two themed areas or three small themed areas and maybe you can get something like that done in a quarter of the time because you're not building you know six times as much so that's something um maybe you could do just so we can see your name again in the near future but i definitely hope to see your name in my inbox again so absolutely amazing work on this one today real chill dill what did you guys think of this builders mega park here adventure land theme park fire away down in the comments below for our builder and uh that is going to do it for us in today's episode of park spotlight thank you guys so much for watching and i hope you all have an absolutely wonderful day Bye now.